In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use AI to make much better presentations and save a ton of time in the process. I'll be using ChatGPT for most of these, but really you can use any generative AI tool, Gemini, Perplexity, Copilot, just to name a few. Pretty much all of those will work with some exceptions. Tip number one is to get feedback on your slides. So you can actually take your slide, upload it to ChatGPT and ask for feedback. And it does a pretty good job. I didn't make this slide, but pretend this is the slide that I made that I'm now uploading to ChatGPT. And I'll just keep it really simple. Can you please give me feedback on this slide. No context, no background, and this is just the free version of ChatGPT. And even with no background or context, it gives me pretty good feedback. Not perfect, but pretty good. Where you're really gonna get the most value though is in asking follow-up questions or getting more specific with your questions. And really push ChatGPT to give you solid recommendations. The more context you provide, the more description you provide, the better questions you ask, the better results you're gonna get. Another really useful thing you can do here is customize your ChatGPT. Again, this is available in the free version. So just tell them your role and what you do with the company, the types of slides you're supposed to build. And pro tip here, if your company has any slide guidelines, formatting guidelines, you can just upload those. So anytime you ask for feedback, it's automatically going to check against those. It makes your life a lot easier. If you have the paid version of ChatGPT, you can take it one step further and even make your own custom GPT. And here you can really do a lot as far as training your specific GPT to respond in the way that you want it to respond and give you really good feedback. Tools like Perplexity also make this really easy. You can create a space, add all sorts of background information about your company or your specific project, makes the feedback pretty good. So obviously the big issue here is confidentiality. You can't always just take a client slide and upload it to ChatGPT or any sort of generative AI tool, but there's a couple things you can do to help mitigate this. So first thing is just go into your settings here settings, then go to data controls. In this part right here that says improve the model for everyone, just make sure that's set to off. You can also go to personalization. In this part right here that says memory, you can turn this off. Next thing I'd recommend is go up to this drop down right here and try temporary chat. This is almost like incognito mode, but for ChatGPT. But if you're really worried about it, the best thing to do is just scrub any confidential data from the slide delete client names, numbers, things like that. And you can still get pretty good feedback on the structure and the design of your slide. Tip number two is to use ChatGPT to help you practice your presentation. So let's say I actually need to present my slides. I can upload the entire presentation or the slides that I'm gonna be presenting into ChatGPT and I can ask it to, number one, give me speaking points, quiz me on what's in there, or even ask me hard questions as if it's a member of the audience. But the best part is I can actually do all of this on my phone, so it's as if I'm practicing a real presentation. So I'm gonna go into ChatGPT here and just provide some basic background first. So I just gave some basic information about my client, said they're a finance team, most of them have five to 10 years of experience, and they're really good with numbers. And I'm asking ChatGPT to pretend they're a member of this audience. And when I actually present one of these slides, I wanted to ask me questions. And again, I'm gonna do this over my phone. And the good thing about this is I can just find the chat in my phone. I don't have to re-upload the presentation or anything like that. It's already ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna present slide 15. Can you pretend you're an audience member and then give me feedback? together can help you with your presentation storytelling. So then I would answer the questions and he could give me feedback on my answers. How do you suggest simplifying a slide without losing key details that executives might need? And something like this is so helpful, not just for, you know, a big presentation, but even little things like if you're going into an interview or even just a one on one meeting, you can prepare, you can present and it gives you good feedback. Really useful tool. Tip number three is to improve your slide building skills. And I don't mean just get immediate feedback, but try and improve your skills over the long term. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but here's a few that I like. One really practical thing, especially if you're more junior or you need help building slides, is to use it to help you interpret your manager's feedback. It sounds really dumb, but it can actually be really useful. So let's say for example, this is a slide that I've built right here, and my manager gave me this feedback. What's the so what? Let's put a chart in the RHS. What does that mean? Emphasize the overall downward trend. Better, oh, probably. This is what she means. Better use of color, please fix. Okay, so what does this mean? What do I do about this? So all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna screenshot this right here, add it to my ChatGPT. Again, there's no context here, but the more context you add, the better. My manager gave me feedback on this slide, yellow box. What does she mean and how can I implement it? So even just a basic response here is just gonna help me understand what each of these things mean, but then we can make it even more useful by asking it to help you actually apply these things. So say, can you give me detailed feedback on what I should do? And for things like, so what? It's gonna actually give me some examples of what I should put in the title. Also tells me the type of chart I should use there. And again, really detailed feedback based on what my manager is saying. But here's a pro tip. If you keep memory on 
and ask ChatGPT to remember what your boss is telling you, you can kind of learn your boss's feedback style over time. So then you can upload your slides and say something like, what do you think my boss is gonna say about this? And you can sort of preemptively improve your slides and again, learn over time. Sometimes it can also be useful to reverse engineer slides that you already like. So if you have slides at your company, you can upload those and say, what's good about these slides? How can I adopt these in my own slides? Or you can go to a website like slidestart.com, shameless plug. And we've got thousands of different slides, real slides from real companies. So for example, let's say I wanna choose slides from Accenture because I like those slides. And then I will type in, let's say Chevron. I wanna find slides with Chevrons on it. And all these have Chevrons on it. So I can find one of these that I like. And again, I'm just gonna upload this to ChatGPT and say, how could I make a slide that looks just like this? Now you gotta be really careful here with copyright issues. You can't just recreate a slide that's already been created. That's not original work, but you can learn from that slide. What's good about this slide? What's not good about that slide? And you can use that to become a better slide creator over time. By the way, on SlideStart, you can actually bookmark slides, save them, come back to them. It's really helpful for this kind of stuff. My next tip is to ask for PowerPoint help, or if you use Google Slides or whatever tool you use, you can ask for specific steps for how to do things. So for example, let's say I wanna know how to make a waterfall chart within PowerPoint. I can say, can you teach me how to make a waterfall chart in PowerPoint? Give me step-by-step -step instructions. And ChatGPT is not always perfect with this. Perplexity tends to give me better results in terms of accuracy, but ChatGPT is still pretty good. And the good thing about this is I can ask follow-up questions. So for example, maybe I'm wondering how I can make subtitle columns within the waterfall chart. And just like that, detailed instructions. Sometimes I'll also screenshot a specific part of a slide, like if I wanna see how one of my colleagues or somebody else made something, I can ask ChatGPT how to do that specific thing. A bonus tip here is you can use it to extract data or extract text. Let's say you have a picture of a quote or something, just screenshot that quote, throw it into ChatGPT, it's a small thing, but it makes it easier to just paste that into your slide. Or if you have a chart and you don't know the actual underlying data, it's not always perfect, but it does a pretty good job of estimating what the underlying data is for that chart. The next tip is to use ChatGPT to refine your messaging. This can mean a bunch of different things, but of course, at its most basic level, this just means rewording your text. And I'm sure we've all done something like this, but it's especially useful for rewording your titles. I can just ask it to reword something for me, or if you have longer blocks of text, this is really good for simplifying it into text that's clear and easy to read, but doesn't lose the meaning. But what I found is most useful is actually uploading your entire presentation and getting feedback on the story flow, on the structure, things like that. Or better yet, use it to craft the structure of your presentation even before you make it. But the trick here is to answer two really key questions before it actually generates anything. First question is, what do you want your audience to believe after they view the presentation? That should guide your whole presentation. That's the main takeaway. And then also, why should your audience care? That's gonna guide your introduction and help pull your audience into the story. And it does a pretty good job, but in a realistic scenario, what you would wanna do is take these titles and then build on them. Ask for data to support this and for sources and things like that. Again, tools like Perplexity are better when you need actual reliable sources, but when you're just trying to carve out your story, this is a really useful thing to do before you actually create the presentation. Or if you've already created the presentation, getting presentation level feedback on the story flow and how things kind of flow together logically can be really helpful. So most of these tips are really helpful if you already have a presentation, but if you're trying to learn how to build a presentation from scratch, check out this video right here where I teach you how to build a McKinsey style presentation using tools like ChatGPT.